In today's lesson, we're going to be taking a look at render settings and video playbacks. Previously, we did touch on the subject, but it was not as detailed. So in this lesson, we're going to find out three things. Number one is how to get the right render settings. Number two, how to get smoother playbacks. And number three, how we can achieve a smoother video editing experience. So what happens when you don't render your videos is that your program will lag and so will your videos. Other times you may not see the effects to their full potential. And worst case scenario, your program may crash. I have three videos in my project media. You can go ahead and get them from Pixabay, Stock Media, Pixabay, and just search for the following tags, these ones. That's the first video for the second video. Got these. And the third video, we have these. So if you search any of these tags, you should be able to get these uh, videos. Now I have three different videos because each of them have uh, different sizes. The first video we have, uh, as the name says, 50 frames per second, and the resolution is HD. The second video is 25 frames per second, but it's 4K. And the third video is HD and 25 frames per second. So they're all very different. And we're going to see how we can render these types of videos with each of them having a different resolution and size. So I'm going to bring this 4K clip as well. And you can see it needs to be rendered because we're seeing this red line. Let me delete this. So rendering is pretty easy. All you have to do is to hit this icon and Filmora is going to create a render preview. And now we have a green line, which means I no longer need to render this clip. And this button is grayed out. But if I were to add something on top, let's go to overlays. And I'm just going to add something from the film stock, something that has a lot of uh, movement. Just put this directly on my video. Let's do a bunch of other things. Just stack things on top. Let's put this here. And now you can see with two effects, Filmora is asking me to render this video again. Let's play this back. If you don't render, it doesn't mean that you cannot view your video. I can play this back, but I will experience some lag and maybe not see your effects to the full potential. But again, this can be different for every computer user. For some, they can still view their video in real time. But for some other computer users, they may not be able to even see their video without rendering. So it really depends on how your computer is. But we're going to learn all about uh, how you can get a better experience with these type of videos. Let's delete this. Let's take a look at some things that can help you with a smoother playback. Number one is obviously the button. With every red line that appears, you need to hit this button once to render your video. Another thing is when you have a large file, like let's check this out. This is 81 megabytes, 0.47. Add that on my video. Let's match the media. And while we're here, slow it down. Play this back. If you have a large file and you're kind of pressuring, um, and you're putting pressure on the program to do some stuff, like slow it down. If you're not getting a smooth playback, even after rendering, you could change the resolution of your preview. Now this is the preview bar as we learned, and changing the resolution will allow you to see a smoother playback and you will not experience any lags once you change this. So right now we're on full. This is the full quality of my video. It's just as we see it here, but if I select this and bring this down by half, I will lose some quality, but this will allow me to see my video while I'm editing especially when you're working with tons of videos, audio files, effects, and all that, you want to make sure that you bring down the resolution of your um, videos. 
so that you get to at least see what's happening in your clip before exporting it. This does not affect the quality of your exported video, it's just affecting the quality of what you see in this box. So if I go to 1 8 I'm still able to see my video, nothing has changed much, except as you can see things are a little bit pixelated. But if I hit pause, it's back to the original quality. So pay attention to the details here. If I hit space, it's kind of pixelated. If I hit pause, it's back to full quality. So this is only being applied to when you're playing your videos back. If you pause it, you can still see the details and see whether the colors are right. But when you're playing this, this will be applied to your playback, like so. So what you can do is add all your effects, all the slow motions and whatever else you want, and then bring back the quality to full to see whether you need to continue adding effects or if that's enough. So let's try adding some, um, let's just color correct this. Color correction. Guess this is good, cool film. Hit OK. Go to effects and maybe add another filter. Nightlife, something really extreme. There we go. This right now is not full. Play this back. And you can see how it's pixelated. And even if you pay attention to the size of the ladle, you can see it's uh, really sharp. But if I hit pause, it's smooth again. So this only affects playback. There we go. Let's bring this back to normal. Head over to this, hit normal. We have to render this again because the line is red, it's turning green. Play this back and there we go. Let's bring it back to full quality. Play this back. And now we can see the smooth video of this person cooking. All right, now let's take a look at our preferences and see what we can do to make our editing experience a lot more smooth. Let's head over to our preferences, Wondershare Filmora, and go to preferences right here. You are looking for this window. And over here, you get to change things for your preference. For example, you can change the appearance from dark mode, light mode, system default, and just uh, work with the settings you see right here. We're going to head over to save. And over here, you can ask Filmora to back up your project. Now, like we said, if you're working with a lot of large files on your project and you're just adding effects and slowing things down, basically uh, doing a lot with your program, I would highly recommend that you turn this on. Because if for some reason you're putting too much pressure on your computer, Filmora can crash and so will your other programs. But if you have this turned on, you will not have to worry about uh, your Filmora crashing because you had it backed up. You can add to this or reduce four minutes, maybe put it for 60 minutes, whatever you want. But I highly recommend that you guys turn this on. It really is a lifesaver. Now let's head over to performance where we can come to preview render. So over here, you can ask Filmora to render things on its own without you having to press that button every time. So if you turn this on, and choose a time, so start after five seconds. Let's put seven. Filmora will just render your videos without you having to do it yourself. And this can be helpful because sometimes you forget to render and you may think that it's there's a problem with your videos and it just makes your editing a lot more faster. We also have the preview render files. What this means is that every time Filmora is rendering your videos, it's saving a render file which means that if I, uh, we're going to see how that works. Let's close that and see what that means. So I rendered this video that we just 
color graded. Head over to my media and I'm just going to delete this. Once I bring this back, you can see that the line is green, even though uh, this is not the color corrected version that we just rendered. So what happened is that Filmora created a render file for this video. And if I bring it in again, unless I stack it up like this, it won't ask me to render because it created a render file. And this is um, active throughout your whole editing process. And it's helpful indeed. Let's head over to the preferences again. And once you close a project, these render files will remain. And if you want to get rid of them after a large project, you can hit this clean button and you can even choose where these render files go hit others if you want to browse and find another folder you can also ask filmora to automatically delete render files when you close the project so let's turn this on and this too let's just bring this to five i'm going to close this and i will bring in a I'm going to bring in this video so as we can see, the line is red. And as we know, that means that I need to render this video in order to see it in full effect. Now I just have to wait five seconds after importing for my video to be rendered automatically by Filmora. And as you saw, it just suddenly turned green because as soon as you bring it onto your timeline, Filmora is going to count to five seconds or whatever number you kept there and it will auto render this video. So I did not have to press this button for this video. Filmora did it for me. Now, if I delete this from my timeline, bring it in again, it's still green because Filmora created a render file. So because we turned on the automatically delete render file, uh, this render file should be deleted once I close this program. So I closed my program and I'm also going to close this. Let's go back to Filmora again. All right, so I opened the program again, and now let's go to stock media where I had that video, bring it in, match to media, and it's red. This happened because Filmora deleted the render file, and now I would have to render this again. As you can see, it's red, meaning that we do not have a render file for this video yet. But if you uncheck that, you can still have the render files. The problem with that is that if you edit often, you're going to pile up render files and it will just take up space on your computer unless you clean it every week or so. So I would recommend that you guys turn that on so you don't end up piling different render files on top of each other and taking additional space on your computer and that way you're just more uh, organized in terms of render files. Whenever you're finished with a project, Filmora will just delete those render files and that way you can avoid uh, the loss of space on your computer. And now we know how to render properly and use the right uh, settings in our preferences to get a better editing experience. Now let's move on to the next lesson where we're going to take a look at one of Filmora's awesome tools called AI Stylizer.